Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the first uh, TESO Affiliate Network and Career Path Development PLN webinar for this year. Um, there you are. So today we will be talking about um, the career path development, definitions, introduction, and uh, CPD TESO PLN, the five components of career path development, the five stages of the TESO career path development, We'll go into breakout rooms to have fruitful discussions and interesting discussions with participants. We'll do a group debrief, um, Q&A survey, and then all our, um, some interesting events that we have um, for you for the future, right? So without further ado, um, my name is uh, George Georgios Kornpas and I'm currently the ANBC chair. The AMPC is the Affiliate Network Professional Council, the Professional Council of TESO that um, is the link between um, almost 120 affiliates in more than 70 countries around the world and uh, TESO International. So the purpose of the council is to create connections, to um, take care of all that synergy that our affiliates, our PLNs, our intersections, the professional councils all have together. Together with us today is also Jim Papel, who is the ANPC incoming chair. Welcome. He's joining us from Canada. Hello, and everyone. On behalf of the Career Path Development PLN, which we're very grateful that they have suggested and we're doing this uh, collaborative webinar, is uh, Liz Ingla, the CPD PLN leader. She's joining us from Virginia, right? Yep. Yes, welcome. And Amir Salama, the online discussion facilitator and moderator, and she's joining us from Egypt. Welcome, Mir, as well. Thank you. So, Welcome to you all. We have lots of international participants from all over the world, uh, but you'll get to know more of these participants when we go to the breakout rooms. Right. So now I'll pass it on to um, Liz and Amira. Thank you, George. Thank you so much for helping us to organize this event. You've been great. Uh, Jim, thank you. We didn't know each other until now, so I'm very happy to meet you too. And Valerie Novak, who's not here, has been our, our tireless TESOL staff member who's helped us to get this um, uh, joint event organized. Uh, George and Valerie have done a great job. Most of all, my thanks to Amira Salema, my beloved colleague and friend, and um, collaborator on many projects that we've done for TESOL, for um, in Egypt. Originally, we met in, in Cairo, I think 10 or something years ago. I'm making that up. Um, uh, the PLN and career path development is, has a long history. I'm not going to talk about it. We're here to talk about you. Um, each of the people who've uh, joined, signed in, registered, and shown up today um, for the Zoom call. Thank you so much for coming. Um, welcome to the table. I like to think of Zoom. Lately, I've been um, thinking about Zoom as kind of like a, a family gathering at around a table, and I would welcome you to that table today. We're going to talk together. We're going to think together. We're going to feel feelings that are important to us. We're going to ask questions. And we're going to kind of lean in kind of far into this topic of career path development in the current um, environment. Somebody said to me um, the other day, they said, you know, have you ever done anything like this before? Have you ever been in times like these before, changing times? We didn't ask for this. We didn't say, okay, we're ready. We would like to make a change. Okay, let's go. We'll do it. No, this got handed to us. Um, and each of us has taken on this task in different ways. And I'm very, very excited to be here to talk about those issues to get today. We're navigating changing times, very sudden, unexpected changes. T-Solars are remarkable human beings because they are doing it so uh, well and so differently in all over the world. You're gonna need a pad of paper, old school, um, it would be helpful for you to have a little something to write on because something will come to your head. You don't want to put it in the chat box. 
we have a chat box and it's on fire at the moment. I'm so glad to see everybody writing things there. Have you ever been through anything like this before in your life? Have you ever experienced a massive change in the way that you do things? Um, in our book on TESOL career path development, I was thinking about this preparing for this event. The one thing that for me was a change was moving from the southern part, middle part of Illinois in the US. I got on a plane and I moved to Cairo, Egypt to take a job. I had never been out of the United States of my life. And that's how I feel now with the changes that we have in our lives now. I felt somewhat similar in that. And I'd invite you to jot down a change in your life that came in the past that you think, wow, that was huge. It might have been a happy change, might have been a sad change, but a change nevertheless. Think of your own life. We're going to be a little bit selfish today thinking about our own careers. In this event today, everybody's going to get a chance to talk and everyone's going to have a chance to listen. And we're going to guide you in what will be, I hope, a deeper, longer chance in the, in the breakout rooms that George is so deftly set up for us today. Thank you a million, George. I'm going to turn it over now. We're going to move to the next slide and talk a little bit um, about an introduction. Amira? Thanks, Liz. So as you mentioned, today's session is basically about you as TESOL professionals. We are not going to talk that much, but just a brief introduction about the topic, which is career path development. And since we are talking now about a lot of the changes that happened in our life during this pandemic as TESOL professionals, starting from shifting our courses to an online platform, to canceling our TESOL conference, to having to adapt with these changes in our professional life as a TESOL uh, professionals, uh, all of these challenges, we were able to adapt and to adjust and to uh, move away from any challenges and show our resilience as a community during this time. So the concept or the definition of TESOL career path really includes all of these components. So we are talking about teacher education. We are talking about what motivates teachers during this time. What keeps you motivated right now? Since some of us get motivation from networking, from attending conferences, from meeting colleagues, uh, and this now is cancelled face to face, I would say. So what source of motivation do you still keep as a teacher right now? And what are the challenges that you have in adjusting and in adapting to this online platform? Uh, I hear like thoughts from some of my uh, colleagues saying that they get exhausted by spending a lot of time in front of the screen. But yet, there is no other choice for us right now. How do you keep yourself motivated in this environment? Uh, so also talking about organizational development, and this is part of career path development, and we have talked about this uh, before in other events for career path development. We are not going to spend much time talking about it today, but just to give you an idea about this, how much support do you get as a professional from your organization right now? Some teachers in some contexts are left alone online to like find their own way, without any support from the administration, without any support from colleagues. So if you are in a, teacher, a teacher in this situation, how do you get support? How do you try to navigate your way to do your best with your students and with your colleagues in your uh, context? Also talking about leadership is one component of career path development because the practices that we do right now as TESOL professionals, trying to inspire each other, trying to connect with each other, Coming to this session today is actually a practice of leadership because we are here to support each other and to share our experiences as TESOL professionals. And this is indeed one of the definitions of leaders according to the literature. So also practices of leadership during this time of pandemic are things that we are going to reflect on when we go to the breakout rooms. And finding a life balance because the photo that Liz started with is really interesting. And when I look at it, I actually see as well the COVID-19 curve, and we are trying yeah. to <laughs> try to find our way, try to navigate our way through this. So trying to find the balance during these difficult times is also important, and we need to reflect on this. So all of these issues combined are what we are going to reflect on today in our interactive session and through the breakout rooms. This is so. I think I'm next, George. The, uh, this is kind of an explanation of how we're going to go. The new world of English language teaching is in Zoom, in Skype, in all kinds of online contexts. 
And we're not talking today about online teaching or giving tips so much as we are talking about teachers who are in that context, newly placed, and perhaps not so much uh, with their own input that they just got put into that situation. So um, very, very quickly, I'd like to just uh, identify five stages of T-cell careers that uh, came out of the research we did for a book on the topic of, of T-cell career path development. Um, you have a handout. If you scroll all the way up to the top of the chat box, you're going to find a link to a handout that contains more details. But for the sake of this con conversation, just take a look at those five and see what you think is yours. A pre-service teacher would be somebody in graduate school hasn't started teaching professionally yet. A novice beginner teacher is in his or her first year or approximately first year of teaching. A mid-career career switcher would be somebody who's kind of maybe established as a TESOL professional or may have come into TESOL from another profession. Uh, a career switcher. So a nurse might have changed to TESOL and come in at mid-career. That person brings his or her own skills from the old profession. A veteran teacher, I'm looking at my colleague Christine Combe here and, and maybe Deborah Healy was with us earlier, is, is here too. There are others. I, I'm sorry that I can't name others, but you know who you are. Veteran teachers, George and, and, and Jim. Veteran teachers are people who've really George is saying, no, he's not a veteran. He's too, he's too young, too young and frisky. The veteran teachers are those who really are established, uh, have a TESOL International Association identity. Um, Amira is a veteran teacher now that she's a leader in TESOL and has been teaching in, in Cairo in a variety of different contexts. People know her. Uh, she's a veteran. I'm semi-retired. Um, I'm not sitting on the porch on my rocking chair, not yet, though I do have a grandchild. Um, uh, a semi-retired TESOLer is somebody who is selecting projects often, uh, maybe teaching, maybe research, maybe service. Um, so those are the five stages. And there's more detail in that handout that will uh, perhaps interest anyone. And by the way, email us if you have any questions about any of that. So pick your stage. See where you think you are, where are you kind of, where do you fit? Maybe you feel like you're in between, that we missed your stage, that would be fine. But this is just a kind of first effort to establish TESOL professionals on a timeline, if you will, of their careers. This is what Amir was talking about before, um, the five components or parts uh, of TESOL career path development. And just to, for your visual, for those who are visual learners. I think we're gonna move to the great breakout rooms now. And we have yes. George and Jim talking about the rules. We want you to think about some questions. George, Jim. Jim, would you like to go through the questions and I'll go through the format of the breakout rooms? Yeah, uh, thanks. I, I just needed a minute to, uh, to unmute myself there. So um, as you can see from the, the questions on the screen, the, the first one is, what has changed in your teaching during this pandemic? Um, I'm sure it's quite a lot of things. And so hopefully uh, that'll uh, generate some discussion there. And our next question is, what is one big challenge you have? Uh, followed by, what new skills have you adopted during this pandemic? And I am muted. So the um, guide for breakout rooms, quick introduction of each participant and challenge ideas exchange, of course, final min two minutes to plan the whole group presentation. So what we're looking for in the, um, in the rooms is you will go to a room that has, um, it depends on the number of participants, so maybe five to six participants or four to six. Um, there will be people from places, that people you don't know, from different places around the world. Uh, make certain that you have a facilitator or a spokesperson in your, um, in your group so that they, um, they report back to the group, to the whole group, to all of us. And of course, enjoy your time. All right. So um, 
some advice for the rooms, be mindful of time. So we said we have about 15 to 20 minutes. We'll be sending out a notice message five minutes um, when the time is up. So you have, um, you're aware of the time. Speak and listen respectfully. Make sure you give everybody time to speak and to listen. If you want clarification, be clear with what you say and the facilitator will summarize. You can all help the facilitator towards the end of the discussion to summarize. Now, we all know that it's, it might be difficult to summarize things, so we've created um, a Google Doc with all this information, and uh, we'll post the link on the chat box in a second. <clears throat> so you have the guide and the questions, and you have the breakout rooms at the bottom of the page. So, um, According to the room you're going to be in, so you'll be breakout room one, two, three, four, five, and so on. There's more than four. This is just a screenshot. So go there and write your names and then your notes so that it's easier for the facilitator to um, gather all the information towards the end. All right. If you have any questions, you can um, share, you can ask. Um, I think. Georgia. Uh, can you go back to the slide with the questions? Sure. Because when we were thinking about these questions, we're also thinking that, you know, like after this pandemic is over, I hope it will be over soon, that we as professionals can think of the skills that we have really learned during this time. Like what are the skills that you can add to your CV after this pandemic is over? Thinking about your career, uh, learning how to present online is one learning how to be sometimes more compassionate with the students is a skill as well so thinking about all of these things that we are going through and how we were able to adapt and to adjust as professionals and uh, trying to write this down so these are things that we can all share at the end as things that we have learned uh, from this pandemic not necessarily only the challenges but i'm sure we are all like had a challenge that we're able to overcome on our own. So try to think of these moments as well and write them down. Uh, so when we come back, we can share them as a group. So any questions? If there are no other questions, I've posted the link for the, um, the document Google. and you'll be- Yes. Soon, you'll be soon- Yes, sorry. So, yes. Hi, George. I'm Anna from Hi. Argentina. Hi. Hi, how Hi are you? Anna. Anna Maria. Anna. How are you? <laughs> Long time. <laughs> Long time, yeah. Uh, I have just a, um, I have a question. How sure. can I join the group? I mean, a breakup group. Yeah. So, oh. in a second, you will get a notification on your screen that it will tell you to okay. join um, okay. a room. So, once that notification okay. comes, just click join yeah. and you will go to that room, okay? Good, thank you. Sure. This is Lily, I have one question too. When I clicked sure. on the Google document, then I lost the Zoom area. And then like I have to get off the document to get back to here. Am so, I doing something? No, you're, you're perfectly fine. Just when, <laughs> um, no, you're good. When, the, um, when you go to your room, the shared screen will disappear. So you will have access to both the document and your screen. Okay. Thanks. So right. just just wait one minute, I, yeah. less than one minute. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you'll be going to your rooms now. Just give me one second. Okay. My father used to say, "Go to your room." He would be angry with me. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll be six rooms, five people in each room. So when the notification comes, please accept. And we'll be joining. We'll be coming to the rooms and um, talking and having some discussions with you. See you in a little bit. Excellent.
Uh, Budi, Anna, Nino, and Avisa, just accept the invitation on your screen. There's an invitation that says, um, join the breakout room. challenges you face and skills that you have. What we found out, Leah Cami Stein, who's in LA and I did this with a My Saw Lounge a couple of weeks ago, and we found out that teachers didn't know that they have new skills. <laughs> you know, they, they said, well, I'm now using this new app that I never used before. And we're saying, put it on your resume. <laughs> so I want you to be sure to be thinking a little bit more broadly than usual with changes you've made in your teaching maybe in your lifestyle uh, just I, I was really happy that we were able to at least see our students before we went online but trying mm -hmm. to the, the relationship online required me to be a bit more personal perhaps than I'm used to um, I, I have I generally have very good rapport with students but I, I tend to keep things back but I think that changed a little bit more for me this time. Well, I think that's uh, good. And I just added a couple of notes there to our uh, Google Doc just uh, as you were speaking there, Alex, in case you're mm. not able to get into it yourself. How about you, Nino? Uh, Hello. Hey. Uh, have you faced any challenges? Um. The first challenge is uh, that uh, I lack uh, um, uh, the feedback. I have no possibility to get uh, to give feedback, and the students were very passive um, while uploading their 
or home tasks uh, because of lack of uh, abilities of um, in technologies. Had this uh, digital literacy or ability or habit of using internet and, and, and media and technology for teaching. I think I'll stop there. Okay. I'm sort of paraphrasing on the document you helped me. <laughs> Who else would like to speak? I'm just, I'll be taking the notes for a while. This is Patricia. Gracia? Yeah. I, okay, I work in a high school, a secondary mm -hmm. school. Okay. In Roma. It's uh, like, uh, you know, a, a, a liceo, so specialized on uh, scientific subjects. We were very lucky because we, we were quite, Quite organized uh, immediately after the lockdown uh, we we used we could use uh, Google Classroom the G Suite platform but unfortunately not But also engaging and bringing games to the online classroom. And I think Deborah is going to talk about that mm -hmm. in a few weeks. I cannot wait <laughs> to hear okay. more about that. Yes. So okay, great. I think bringing games to the online platform is really something that I'm happy I'm doing. Okay. My turn. Mm -hmm. Um, it looks um, like we've we've got a visitor to our room, George. Oh, hi, George. Yeah. I had to. Visit. Hi, George. Is that your actual house, <laughs> or is that a virtual background? It's a virtual background. Are you kidding? He hides. He hides our house. He hides our house. It would be a great house. I have you see. Both. You see. You see the actual background in mine. I think yeah, so. mine too. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, George is my husband. Oh. Ron probably doesn't know. George is my husband. Uh, I had to come visit. Yeah, and, and how do you start? No, I'm, I'm not going to say anything nasty about George. We work together a lot on the ASPC. I have huge respect for him. So I'm not even going to make a joke about it. We're in two different rooms. There's a door in between, so. Uh, okay. uh -huh. Okay, right, so, so okay. since you two are married and you're visiting, I'm going to skip you, Connie, because you can always <laughs> talk together off camera. So we're going to move to okay, good. Deborah. How about you? What are your thoughts with regard to these questions? Well, I'm, I'm based in the U.S. and um, I, I am in the old category. So um, I'm, in theory, I'm retired, but I am not retired. I'm, I'm doing a lot of... Uh, consulting, but um, what it's done for me is, I, I was doing a lot of online teaching before, and now it is completely online because my uh, workshops are online, my interactions with people are online, so it's, it's all online. Um, I've gotten way better at, at Zoom, um, which I hadn't used before because, you know, I was used to using a variety of other tools. But, um, but this has been interesting because, you know, when you see people um, who are not accustomed to online teaching being thrust into it, you get both greater creativity as well as falling flat. Mm. So, um, yes. so the things that I'm, I'm seeing are really interesting that, that people have been doing. So I've, I've been really enjoying hearing what people have been trying out during this. Um, and, and for me, the, the biggest challenge has been just hanging out, not traveling and, and being home all the time, uh, which is good. My garden is looking much better than it usually does when I leave, but, um, <laughs> but, it's, but it is a challenge to think about ways and also to, to talk to teachers 
in less resourced areas who are also forced online to, to come up with ways that they can they can work effectively when you know you're constantly losing Hint? Are you here? Uh, you have Hello. during the uh, the pandemic. Hey, George. Is everybody okay? <laughs> yeah, we just uh, we had somebody giving us a sales pitch there. Uh, All right, you guys can stay here. You can be in the main room. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, I'm on for the for the time being. Uh, I use the Facebook uh, live to make it much easier for the students to get chit chatting and then to help them to move on from uh, what happened all of a sudden and uh, to, uh, to feel that I'm in contact with them because we used to um, um, record the sessions for them and put them on the, the on the website of the university and the students have to go at their own leisure and their own pace to watch the webinars uh, sorry to uh, watch the recordings and do the homework that we asked them to do and we just kept in contact through the Facebook group um, but uh, I also tried to get in live with them in order to give them uh, the feeling that everything is okay and that we are going to get over this everything is going to be sorted that for video calls we use Google Meets because the school's platform uh, does not have this uh, feature. Mm -hmm. So uh, as um, this evolved in the school, they managed to fix it and it's better now. So at the end, because we already ended the, the, the semester uh, a week ago, um, mm -hmm. we have a better um, platform and I guess we are ready to use it for the next semester. Of course, we are also including Socrative, Kahoot, and many other, um, um, many other uh, options mm -hmm. we have available in internet. But yes, uh, we mainly use our own platform. Um, I forgot where you are, Jorge. In Mexico. Oh, okay, I'm gonna put, I'm just kinda, oh, I just zoomed in, now I can see better. <laughs> and another difference is that we need to wear this almost all the time. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I mean, how many people here do you think in the fall we will still be online? We just had a meeting yesterday. I'm going to be online in fall, but not going back we to my school. We are kind of, yes, mm -hmm. likely. So all we of the things we're are. learning right now, yeah. you know, I, we, I think we all feel, oh my gosh, I'm going to be so much better in August mm -hmm. than I was in March, <laughs> you know. Patricia, you haven't yes. added anything yet, I don't think. Well, I think that it's been such a learning experience, but interesting because students are learning too. And so there needs to be a lot of coaching yes. uh, for the new experience. Uh, I find that it consumes a tremendous Install us up. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been interesting to see How that. How about your new skills? Hmm? New skills. Just wondering about Iwan's new skills that he's developed. Uh, 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 use listening skill because, and also reading skill. I said uh, videos of learning uh, such as descriptive text that I made by myself. Uh, I think it's not good enough, but I try my best. Mm -hmm. Great. And later on, if this online learning continues or carry on, I will develop my material after joining several webinars. I get inspired yeah. because, mm -hmm. yeah. Right, um, it's going to be 60 seconds online learning and we're going to go back to the main room. Thing. Right? That's 60 right. seconds. Thank you. Learning process. Thank okay. you. Yeah, so difficult to, to connect with uh, kind of internet. 
Yeah. And, yeah. That must be a difficult challenge. Uh, how are you dealing yes. with the, uh, you know, students in remote areas? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes uh, uh, it's helpful if I chat with uh, WhatsApp plus um, a kind of Telegram application and uh, asking them to uh, visiting the visit the the the, the uh, Google Classroom or a kind of Moodle class, yeah, the project like that. Because only a half of my class can send in the uh, video meeting. Yes, I see. Well, it looks like everybody's now coming back from their breakout rooms. So, um, thank you uh, to my group for for sharing and, and and jumping back into uh, the main room with me. Uh, I know that was a bit awkward yeah. there. Thanks for your patience. Thank you. All right, I think um, everybody's back. Welcome back, everyone. I think your I hope your discussions were interesting and fruitful and I saw lots of comments on the Google Doc so thank you for that um, so I think Jim and Amira you're going to be facilitating the discussion from now on from the rooms yes okay I'm trying to get access to the Google Doc one second mm -hmm. yes so what you're going to do now is just share what you have done in the breakout rooms uh, I really enjoyed the one I was in, uh, and we were got cut in the middle, so um, we can still share ideas here as a group. I will start. Should I share the Google Doc, George? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Now you can, I think. Thank you. Yes, so you have breakout room one. Uh, and yeah, I think in the groups we agreed that we'll have a facilitator. Someone's going to report on the group ideas and thoughts. So would you like to go, go ahead? <coughs> you want to start with maybe breakout room uh, two? It looks like room one's still composing there, maybe. Uh, yep, so I was, you know, putting uh, group number one. But uh, you know there were some technical prospects, so we can go. So, what we talk, you know, about the challenges that uh, we've been spending a lot of screen time and attending these wonderful webinars, which are all for free. And uh, talking about myself personally, I've been participating in books and webinars and sharing these opportunities to teachers. I was, you know online community on Facebook, I'll teacher development webinars, also shared the link in the chat. So, yeah. That's great. And thanks for sharing those links. Um, we'll have to keep an eye out for them in the, the chat box there. Um, maybe is there someone from uh, breakout room two that's willing to speak on behalf of the group? I can. Hi yes, there. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so we had a very fruitful discussion with regard to um, difficulties, but also kind of extensions of what we did. So we had uh, members that talked about just difficulty with internet uh, um, accessibility, and that very much sometimes affected motivation. So for example, if you had offered Google Classroom, but then shh, Sorry, my five-year-old, I apologize. That's why I hesitated to volunteer to unmute myself. Uh, that's um, okay. So having um, Google Classroom versus WhatsApp, WhatsApp not being as interactive, but something that students are much more familiar with and even it's much more accessible. Um, we also talked about students traveling back home, the time zones, some going into quarantine, literally taking classes from hotel rooms. Um, also the importance of trying to um, develop synchronous and asynchronous sessions to not put the onus on you have to be here at 
3 p.m. Eastern time. That's the only time I'm going to be online. So giving it's that flexibility and relating to flexibility. Also, there was a great idea to start small, like start with Facebook Live, getting students acclimated, chatting with it's each other, as well as, um, and then moving into Zoom and another platform that I couldn't quite get the name of as I was taking notes. And also just the importance of um, one thing that is just um, giving the space to change content objectives, where giving the space for students to write about what they need to, speak about what they need to, you know, keeping the core, like, okay, you're writing an essay, you're writing a comparative contrast, or we're gonna do a persuasive speech. Oh, you don't wanna uh, talk about tourism in Florida? Okay, what do you guys wanna talk about? You know, what, how can this be easier for you? Uh, in the midst of a pandemic and, you know, in the state, um, a lot of So we had a lot of different things to discuss in only 15 minutes. So uh, oh, that's what yeah. we were able to that's, do. Uh, this is very interesting. So you are thinking not just like of how to use technology, but also the adjustments that you have to make to your course content and pedagogical techniques. Uh, it's a whole new, like, thing that you're doing which is really very uh, creative thank you very much for sharing and uh, uh, so we have breakout room three uh, uh, this was my group but uh, I feel like I've spoken enough already um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so if one of the other members would like to uh, to step forward that'd be great I have great ideas there I don't know if um, maybe uh, if Hind or Alex or Nino uh, is. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I can yeah. I can talk. I'm sorry. I, I had oh. <laughs> my iPad froze for a second there. Okay, so um, yeah, we we talked about things like um, you know, in terms of in terms of challenges, um, you know, issues with internet. I, I think a lot of what we've already uh, heard has been discussed. Um, you know, things like issues with internet, um, issues with motivation, um, things like that. Um, how, however, I, I think in, in terms of like new skills or, or kind of to focus on the good things that came out of it, I think we all learned a, a lot about, first of all, this really made us go to more PD and learn more things. Um, and specifically, what did we learn? You know, we, we got better at using Zoom and other kinds of technologies. Uh, one of the members in our group talked about like doing more with video and making video and using them. Um, so, so we just try and having more personal connections with students in, in an online way. Uh, so while there were a lot of the same challenges, I think a lot of us faced, you know, I think we all grew with different kinds of skills at the same time. Thanks, Alex. You did a great job of summarizing that and, uh, and really bringing forth uh, sort of the positive learning outcomes there. Yeah, breakout uh, room four was my group actually, but uh, I would leave Nazia. She was the facilitator, so she can share with us the thoughts and from this group. Thank you, Mira. Hello, everybody. So we had an interesting discussion where uh, we spoke about some of the things that have changed in our teaching. And we said that we had developed more patience, more empathy towards the teachers and students that we're dealing with. Because I'm a teacher trainer, but there were teachers in the room as well. So a lot more empathy now than one would normally assume to have as well as a lot more affection for students because this is a very, very challenging situation where we're building relationships now uh, more than ever just because you can't see each other uh, anymore. Uh, there was also a mention of learning new IT skills and developing blogs um, and also something very interesting that Mamadou mentioned, I can't pronounce uh, the location uh, where you're from Mamadou, but Burkina I can Faso. say, sorry, what is that? Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso. Okay, okay, thank Burkina you. Faso. So, 
Yeah, that, yeah, that is so in West you, Africa next to Nigeria. Thank you for that. So you spoke you. about teleteaching and radio, something yeah. that those of us who are so heavy on the internet cannot think about. But that was very interesting to hear that those kind of challenges exist as well. So as we got to the part where we were discussing challenges, all we managed to say was that we were frustrated. Some of us are frustrated. We're unable to see people. So that is one of the biggest challenges. And that's when we were directed back to this room. So here we are. Where are you from? Is it Pakistan, Cairo, or? I am, in, I am in the city of Lahore in Pakistan at the moment. Oh, OK. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, how is it any different from Malaysia in terms of accessibility when you talk about online learning? Well, I live in a privileged city and, uh, and I work in a privileged context. So uh, internet access is very easy, but there are areas where internet isn't available and the government has set up a tele learning program. So people uh, in certain contexts can watch TV, but the radio learning was something new for me that I heard from Mamadou, but we have a mixed context in the rural areas people are really just waiting out the situation they're not able to study unfortunately but in the cities there is the option of learning through tv and through the internet so i, I can summarize this by saying that you know the digital divide is the greatest challenge that teachers and students face right now in terms of this uh, covid 19 pandemic because those who have access have the ability and the capacity to learn and those who don't are basically uh, going to struggle. Absolutely. So may I hand over back to James because I know there are other groups waiting as well. Thank you, uh, Naziha. I really appreciate that. Great to, to see you uh, virtually at least uh, again. Um, I think uh, that... <laughs> That brings us to uh, breakout room five. Uh, I see that you've filled out quite a lot in your Google um, Doc uh, space. Uh, could someone from that group uh, maybe step forward? Maybe Christine or? Well, I, I filled it, it out. This is Deborah. Okay. So, you, um, so let me, people uh, mentioned a variety of things. A, a large part of it was the face-to-face -face rapport that was missing in online. Um, and the idea that, um, you know, you're missing this physical presence, the interaction. Also, uh, you know, being tired, being online all the time, being tired, tiring, as well as being unable to be elsewhere, having to be home all the time. Um, and then where it's harder for uh, students, teachers, and administrators to adjust to this online situation, um, especially when we're thinking about um, what's happening with assessment. So I think that that's been uh, an interesting thing for um, that. I think that was especially useful to hear that administrators also need to be um, with the program. The uh, keeping students motivated was a challenge. Um, and uh, we had a variety of tools that people used. Uh, WhatsApp being something that Iwan in Indonesia was using because of lack of connectivity elsewhere. So, um, so we've all had these challenges, but, but teachers are responding to the challenges. Anything else that I missed, uh, group five? Okay, maybe that maybe that was just so good. <laughs> good, great, Deborah. Thanks, so. yes. Okay. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, really appreciate that. That uh, that was great, and uh, it leaves us a little bit of time here for uh, breakout room six to uh, to kind of go through and talk a little bit about the notes that you've put down. Um, is there someone from breakout room six that's willing to speak to it? I took the notes. I'm Lily, but I was thinking if. Uh, Maria Grazzi might want to speak from Rome because we all have prayed so hard for Italy this year. Nice. Uh, okay. Um, it, our group was um, heterogeneous, but uh, it was very, very nice to share this experience with people uh, 
um, uh, living uh, uh, even if a common experience, but in a different way. Also because we uh, teach to different uh, uh, groups. So Elena, for example, uh, uh, teaches at college. I teach at uh, high school. Um, anyway, we uh, noticed that uh, um, digital divide, as uh, other groups have underlined, is a very important uh, and crucial issue. Uh, because even if uh, we, um, in particular in my case, we had uh, the, the, the possibility of starting uh, distance learning immediately, uh, and my school was uh, well organized, but unfortunately not all students and family were ready for that, and this was a big problem. And then uh, uh, not all the teachers could uh, uh, you know, face uh, a, a new kind of uh, teaching. Uh, because uh, distance learning involves a new kinds of teaching uh, because uh, we have also to take into account that the teachers in Italy are quite old. Uh, we, we, you know, the, the, the average age, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's quite high and maybe they are not used to, to, um, to new technology and to online uh, methodologies and strategies. Uh, the reaction of the students was very positive on an average and uh, uh, also, teachers, anyway, um, despite these difficulties, in my opinion, uh, uh, I, I, we can consider this experience uh, uh, positive uh, in a way. Uh, even if uh, professional development uh, uh, opportunities have to be um, improved, also my colleagues uh, underlined that they are alone, they were left alone, and instead the ministry and the professional organizations maybe uh, should support, uh, in my opinion, more uh, teachers uh, um, and teacher trainers, um, in, especially if uh, uh, online, uh, uh, te online uh, distance learning should uh, go on uh, for a long time. Thank you. Very good uh, summary. So we are moving to, I think this is the last room, right, George? I think we've come to the end there. Yeah. yeah. Yep, it is actually the last, um, the last room. Thank you sure. very much, everyone. Um, I think it was the, the time in those sessions always flies, so it, it went really fast. Um, I think the discussions were very much interesting and I hope you had the chance to discuss with the people in your group. So um, the last couple of things that I wanted to stress um, was a little bit of information. So I'm just going to share my screen for one second. So um, Loads. <coughs> so we'll be sending a document with the links for today. So everything that you see now, the um, survey for this um, for this session. But um, when you're evaluating this session at the end, it also has like what other um, issues or what other topics are interesting for you. So make certain anything that is um, you would be interested for your career path development um, and we can arrange the sessions. So don't worry about the link here. I will send it to a document in a minute. Also, there were some questions about the recording, but we'll be sending out the recording in a couple of days with um, the chat box as well and uh, the survey and uh, a handout that uh, Liz and Amira have prepared with uh, very useful resources that was already shared in the chat box. Our next event is on the, well, actually, yeah, on the 27th, um, we will be talking about shifting affiliate events online, a global phenomenon. So we'll have CATISO, California TISO, JALT, the Japanese Association of Language Teachers, as well as TISO International with Rana Khan and Lisa Dyson. So they will give us an insight how do they transform the face-to-face -face, um, conferences into online? Um, of course, as you may well know, the TESOL 
2021 virtual convention. The registration is now open, so you can register for that. Also, on the 22nd to the 24th of June, the first virtual TESOL Advocacy and Policy Summit is going to take place. And the ANPC has already a panel with um, five international affiliates and a past TESOL president that will talk about advocacy around the world. And my TESOL Lounge Live, um, informal discussions, like um, pretty much what we did today. Uh, there's a lot, I think four more coming up this month, right? So thank you from all of us. I will be sending the document now with all the links. So just give me one second and then you may disconnect. So the link is there. We will also send it with the recording. So nice seeing everybody and have a good rest of the day. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. everyone. Bye, bye. Thank you. Bye. Hey, George, I don't see the link. It's a document. Oh, the doc. I don't see that either. So I'm, I put it up twice before. So oh, that hard. doc. Yeah, I, I got that doc. I think that's yeah. Really yeah. That's that's all links link. for today. Oops. Oh, no, I don't. I don't see it still. Was it the one? If it's the one from earlier, I got that. Okay, there. Okay, there it is. Okay, there okay, there there you go. okay good now job. I see Thank it. you, George. Thank you. Is there? I can't see it. Got it. It's there. Okay. Career path development, right? Yeah. No, it's called, yeah, links for today. Thanks, George. Links for today. Yep. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, George. Bye, guys. Thank you. And at one more thing, there's, there's still time to sign up to be on the TESOL board or the nominating committee if you are a TESOL member. June 15th is a deadline. Thought I'd throw that plug in one more time. <laughs> Good idea. Or apply for TESOL, TESOL Teacher of the Year. Yes, indeed, TESOL Teacher of the Year. So all these applications open. I'm looking at some of the people who um, probably should be applying. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.